Emily Varnell was one of the most honest, genuine, caring people that ever lived, and I'm proud to say that she was my wife. She was a lot of things to many different people. Above all, she was a faithful Christian who loved the Lord with a passion. She was always full of joy, regardless of what was going on in her life. Emily was the definition of what you see is what you get. Emily was only on this earth for a short time, but in that time, she made a bigger impact on everyone around her than most people could hope to make in two lifetimes. Many people knew her throughout her life. It didn't matter whether you knew her for years or only days. Everyone saw the same thing, a contagious smile and a warm heart that would change your life. The saying, big things come in small packages, truly applied to Emily Varnell. I'd like to give everyone a glimpse of the life that Emily and I shared. In 2003, I was introduced to this cute, shy little brown-eyed brunette who worked at Sears by night and attended cosmetology school by day. We spent a lot of time hanging out in a small group of friends. It wasn't long before I noticed that Emily was the one who always seemed to call me and make plans for the group to get together. I told myself that I was not interested in being more than friends because she just wasn't what I was looking for. I guess I was wrong. When Emily and I started dating, she lived at home with her parents. She didn't have a driver's license, couldn't cook, and lacked many of the necessary skills for independent living. I was looking for the exact opposite, or so I thought. Her genuine personality and sweet nature simply outweighed any negatives. As much as my head said run away, my heart said this is what you need. Obviously, my heart won out. About six months later, I found myself in a jewelry store looking at engagement rings. Then another six months after that, I found myself standing at the end of an aisle surrounded by friends and family. That day, I took a vow to love and cherish her until death do us part. Unfortunately, that would only be a little more than 12 years later. However, those 12 years were all that I could ask for and more. God blessed us with more than we ever deserved in that short time. We spent the first five years simply enjoying each other and laying the foundation for our future. I finished up nursing school and Emily became a hairstylist and eventually became a partner in a salon. I watched her go from being a shy young girl to a strong independent woman who could inspire anyone and everyone to be better. After five years, our world changed forever when we had our daughter Kaylee. I watched in amazement as Emily adapted quickly and seemingly effortlessly to the role of a mother. Less than a year later, we began discussing the idea of having a second child. Emily was worried that she couldn't possibly love a second child as much as the first, but I knew better. During year seven of our marriage, we welcomed Jordan into the family. Just as I expected, Emily had no problem surrounding both children with that intense love that only a mother can give. Both of our children experienced some medical issues during the first year of their life, and most would believe that I took control during these times, since I'm the nurse. But my nursing knowledge and skills didn't stand a chance against the instinct and love that a mother has for her children. Emily stepped up and did whatever it took to ensure that our children received what they needed. We decided that a family of four was the perfect size for us, so we started making life plans around a small family. Emily chose to stay at home and be a full-time mother and occasionally do hair on the side. This was something that I not only supported, but admired, because being a stay-at-home parent is such a tough job. As expected, she naturally adapted to and excelled in this new role. Shortly after making the decision to stay at home, we bought a house in Saudi Daisy. We both wanted to put a little distance between us and the rest of our families. I guess we wanted to prove that we could do it on our own. After almost three years, we both felt a calling to move back to Cleveland. We sold our house and bought a large camper and parked it on my parents' property. We were planning to build a house on the family farm. A month after we moved, our lives once again changed forever. Emily was diagnosed with breast cancer. Unfortunately, she had received a false negative biopsy result six months prior. So by now, the cancer had spread to her lymph nodes. We were devastated, to say the least but Emily vowed not to let it slow her down. She said that God was on her side and would get her through it. Less than a week after being diagnosed, she had a mastectomy. She was definitely right about God being with us. Just a month prior, we were leaving an hour away from family, but now we had family just a few steps away to help with every need. 
If that's not a true example of God leading us to where we needed to be, I don't know what is. Over the next five months, Emily went through intense chemo and radiation therapy. While undergoing treatment, she put on her bandana to cover her bald head and led music at Vacation Bible School. She was not going to let this cancer keep her from ministering to those little kids. After completing her therapy, she was declared cancer-free. She had a totally new lease on life and a story to tell. Her story was published in the newspaper, and she was named a hero at the Making Strides for Cancer Walk. After beating cancer, she continued doing what she loved to do, spending time with her kids, telling her story, and singing for the Lord at church. She had a voice of an angel. I have no doubt that she is singing to the Lord as we speak. After two years of being cancer-free, she received the unfortunate news that her cancer was back. Once again, she faced it head-on. She endured more chemo and then a special type of radiation called CyberKnife. Once again, she was declared cancer-free. She was so strong and such a fighter that put everyone around her in awe. Unfortunately, a few short months later, her cancer came back yet again. This time, she was much weaker, but she still wanted to fight. She began a third round of chemotherapy. Unfortunately, the medication overwhelmed her immune system. She was unable to receive many of her scheduled doses, and follow-up scans did not show any response to the treatment. We were referred to Emory Hospital to see about an experimental drug trial. When we went, we were pretty much told that the current trials available were unlikely to help Emily, but could be used to help others in the future. She really struggled with this decision because she felt like she was being selfish to say no to the trials. However, saying yes would have meant more side effects and more time away from her children. She had been through so much, more than anyone should ever have to endure. She made a decision to choose quality over quantity. She wanted to take the time that she had left and make as many memories with her family as possible. Let me tell you, she did just that. She was constantly planning a new trip or a special day out. I couldn't even almost keep up with her physically. She was making the most of her time. She continued to struggle with the fact that she was not helping others by participating in the drug trial. So she decided she wanted to help others in a different way. She registered to donate her body to a company called Genesis. The company partners with medical schools to help develop new procedures and techniques. Even in death, Emily wanted to help others. She made a music CD and started writing a book that she was unfortunately not able to finish. Emily Varnell was the most amazing person I've ever known. She loved the Lord and her family, and it was evident in everything that she did. She endured so much pain and suffering that many would turn away from God, but not Emily. The more she suffered, the more she praised Him. Everyone around her could see and was touched by it. Emily was a beautiful person with so many gifts and talents. She was a wonderful mother, and I'm proud to say that she was my wife. I've come to realize that not only did I love her, but I also greatly respected her and all that she accomplished. Our loss is truly heaven's gain, and I will miss her dearly. But I know that a day will come when I hear that sweet voice singing for the Lord once again. I will always love my Emily. Emily was such a brave person. Not only did she spend her last few months making as many memories as possible, she also spent a large portion of time making plans and arrangements for when she was gone. She knew exactly what she wanted, which was not typical for her. She could be rather indecisive at times. But in this case, she was very specific. She planned everything for this very memorial service. She also wanted to give everyone a personal message. Hi everybody, it's Emily. I just wanted to say a few words. Um, if you are watching this video, it's a special day all about me um, because I know that I am celebrating in heaven with my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And what a wonderful day today is, a rejoicing and no more sickness and no more pain. I am so happy. I know, oh, I know that I know that I'm happy to be here. And I would like to take a moment to thank everybody for coming out. And I know all of my family will be going through a hard time. So please feel free to continue to pray for them. And I'm so thankful for all the prayers that you have prayed for me. 
and my family, all of my loved ones, so many cards and sweet letters and just flowers and gestures, so many things that I can't even remember all that everyone has got of me that I hold dear to my heart, which is also each of one of you. And I wanted to share with you today that God is real. He did not do this to me. Look, he has blessed me with so much. I have a wonderful husband, two beautiful kids, a oh, loving God who has just been so good to me. I know I've had a lot of struggles these past four years, and the struggles have been hard, the hardest that I believe anybody should ever have to deal with. But I'm glad he chose me because I, I know that his plan is perfect. And we'll all find out one day what that plan is. And it's okay to be upset, it's okay. Um, but no, I'm not angry. And of course I'm sad because I'm human. And I do, um, would love to be here with you guys. But do know that I'm waiting in heaven for you in this beautiful place. And I also like to take a moment and share a dream that I had. In this dream, um, I'm walking through this rough part of a neighborhood. And as I'm going through here, these people are looking at me. And as they're looking at me, the closer they're coming, the weaker that I'm getting. I'm getting so weak, and I don't understand what's going on. And as this is going on, I'm reliving all of the pain and suffering that I've been dealing with these past few years. And as the people are getting closer, the more weaker I get, I whisper, Jesus. And I see a peep in the clouds that opens up about this much. I get a little stronger and I say, Jesus. The clouds open up a little more and I get even more stronger. And at this point, I'm able to push people off and I say, in Jesus' name, help me. And he reaches down his arms like this and he I knew then that I had died. I'm just weeping, I'm sobbing of all this hurt. And I'm in this nothingness, but yet there's all these colors, there's so much there. Uh, but yet it's dark, but yet there's things there. In fact, I'm standing in this line. There's a line that's going in this room. A line coming out of this room. And you can see through this room, and there are two white-headed men sitting in these throne-like chairs. And I realized it was my judgment day. I realized that it was my time. So I go in there. Now, we doesn't use our mouths at all we use our mind to communicate and he says to me i'm in this form so that you will understand what i'm to say to you i'm in this form so that you understand who i am my son has heard your cries my son has heard your cries for your children and your family and this whole time you have been faithful to me. And he says, I want to give you this. And I said, Lord, I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand. And he says, no, you've had some sins along the way that I'm not too proud of. But he has me a gold ticket. And I see that ticket. And again, Lord, I don't understand. Lord, you've done so much for me. I instantly feel this 
peace and love and joy. My heart is just so happy. My body wants to be there. I want to be with him. In that presence, I knew that was God. Oh, I knew it was him. And I said, Lord, I have to know. I have to know that what you're to tell to me, that this is real. I have to know that this is true. And out of anybody who I know that's in heaven, I know it's my great Aunt Mary. Can I just see you, Lord? And he nods and said, yes. Now the man that was sitting on the other side of him, I knew he wasn't high importance, I don't know who he is. But he takes me to this room and, and he says, he kind of laughs and says, they can get a little crazy in there. And I smile too. And I see people, some are in all gold, some are wearing all white, they're worshiping. It's like if Jesus, as soon as God walked in the room, they were going to worship and love him. And I see my Aunt Mary. I take off Brian and Mary, Mary, it's me. But now we don't use our mouths. And the lady that I see beside her was a, a our friend that used to take her to church. Um, my aunt never married or anything. She was precious to give a brother wonderful lady and she was in all pure white oh i knew it was her and the lady beside her that was talking to me she was in all gold and she says honey what are you doing here and i said i came to see my mary she nudges mary and she turns around and she's so beautiful beautiful this curly hair just gorgeous skin she says honey what are you doing i said i came to I get to go home. I came to see you, Mary, and I get to go home. And she hugs me and she says, it's okay. It's okay to go home. I leave the room and I'm back into the nothingness again. I'm fighting so hard, so hard, but I push on. There was all these beautiful temptations. I know it's beautiful. I know heaven is real. He showed it to me. And I see this arrow and it says this way home. And I wake up with my babies in the bed beside me. I say all that is that God did show me these things. I know he showed these things to me for comfort and he gave me more time. It may not have been as much time as we all wanted, but I thanked him every day for it. Each breath thanked him. Live your life for him. Count all the blessings. Just count every day as a blessing. I, I pray that you leave here tonight filled with love and joy and happiness as he's given me. Don't anger. Be closer to him. He'll guide you all the way. And I love and miss you all so much. And can't wait to see you again.